welcome back to Dan Cave and welcome back to another video build series. Uh, series may be a strong word. This is going to be two parts. Uh, so as mentioned in the last bench update, uh, this series is going to be on this. So this is the Revell 24 scale Shelby Mustang GT 350H, which was the, <clears throat> the Shelby uh, Mustang that was available to rent via the Hertz company in the USA. Uh, so yeah, so the kit is finished. It's up on a shelf up there already. Uh, so I finally got around to editing all the footage. So in part one, I'm gonna cover kind of what you'd expect from a car build. I'm gonna do body work, prep, prime, paint, 2K. Uh, then I'm gonna get most of the, I suppose, engine running gear, wheels, interior all kind of prepped and painted so that'll cover part one uh, and then in part two we will cover that final assembly part and final photos so uh yeah sit back put your feet up relax have a beer have a coffee whatever you want and enjoy the video uh so thanks to everyone who's liked and subscribed so far and if you've not done so uh please give a thumbs up at the end of this video uh um, please give a subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment if you wish as well. So uh, enjoy the show and over to me. So then uh, let's get on with this build. So as I just said, this is the Revell Shelby GT350H. Uh, so this is the 66 model Shelby Mustang. Uh, I have to say it is one of my favorite shapes of, of the Shelby Mustangs. Uh, but this Ravel kit is probably not one of their best ones. It's it is an X Ravel monogram molding, I believe. Uh, so it certainly dates back a little bit. But you know, it was one of those kits that cost me under seventeen pounds from Amazon in the UK. Uh, so I'm not going to turn my nose at that up at that. And it's it's you know it's car like so. Uh, We'll, we'll struggle on with it. So, so start as usual, you know, kind of breaking down the pieces, have a look at the quality of the parts. You can see we have some kind of molded markings on the side of the, the front wing. Uh, so these will be removed during the sanding stage. Uh, so the front and rear volants need to get fitted to the body, uh, which have just clipped off the sprue. Uh, there's also some uh, air intakes which sit behind the, the driver's doors. So on first inspection, I uh, kind of look at these valance parts and I have to admit I'm a little bit confused because I think I've got them the wrong way around because they don't fit where they're shown to fit. And that's basically because they just don't fit. Uh, these parts of the front and rear are probably where where the kit falls down really that the fit is pretty poor so there's quite a bit of work uh just to get them to fit in properly and then i will come back a little bit later and there'll be some filling and sanding so first step as always is get the sanders out uh so ump sanders again uh plus a custom made kind of sanding block that i use to square things off just trying to trim up the excess and the edges of these valance parts to see if I can get them to fit any better uh, than they seem to straight out straight off the sprue. So it's the usual process with the sanders, let the sanders do the work. Uh, so here I am just removing that raised detail, uh, raised logos from the, the front wings. Uh, so, so these aren't actually shown on any of the pictures I've seen of the 350h cars so they'll get completely removed smoothed out and hopefully will will disappear completely so it is it is certainly a fascinating concept for you know for hertz to rent out these cars uh back in the 60s uh, must have been an absolutely fabulous experience for someone to go and rent something like this shelby mustang I mean, it's it's relatively common for you know some kind of hire car companies now to 
to do slightly better models. Uh, they do come at a price, but I suppose this was a bit of an unusual kind of strategy from Hertz. Uh, probably cemented their relationship with Ford as well a little bit. As I understand it, they were rented for a period of time and then refurbished and sold on. So some lucky people out there have them. So I'm just working my way around, you know, looking for seams, looking for any imperfections in the body, uh, working my way through the sanders, progressively getting to a finer and finer grit to get this body prepped for, for priming. So there is a little bit of a seam line runs along the top of the front wings. Uh, it's relatively easy to deal with. Uh, across the rear, three quarters, across the shoulder is a little bit, a little bit of flash on the inside of the windows, and that's easy to deal with. And here I am just trying to attempt to deal with those uh, seam lines that run across those rear kind of shoulder lines. So it's progressed through the kind of grades of sanding. Uh, I'd say the go-to at the moment is the UMT, UMP Thinny Sponge and this UMP sponge sander. They are very, very effective. And of course, once they're worn a bit, they kind of become a finer grit so that they actually retain their usefulness for a long time. So here I'm just using a section of UMP customizable sander just to get into some of the tighter spots on the, the rear of the car. Uh, so this is where the rear valance will fit in, and I'm just trying to make sure that I can get a relatively good fit at this stage because uh, those parts do not fit very well. So after some final fettling, uh, it's time to try and fit these parts. So, so all the way through, I've been constantly dry fitting uh, just to see if I can get the best fit on these parts. Dry fit, bit of adjustment. So I'm finally happy. So break out the Tamiya Extra Thin and start getting these these parts stuck in place. So the rear went on fairly straightforward. Uh, there is a slight little bit of a gap and that'll get filled a little bit later on. The front section, it's better. Uh, a little bit of work has made it better, but it's still not perfect. Uh, but once again, happy enough with it so let's get the extra thin on it and i'll come back a little bit later and do any necessary remedial filling so you can see a little bit of a gap is there so once that's set for a bit uh first step once it's nice nicely cured is come back and sand down any raised edges uh try and profile in those parts a little bit uh, so it's back using the ump sanders to get that done uh, and that's done on the front and rear uh, there is a little bit of a sink mark on the wing as well uh, that kind of actually helps because I have to sand away a little bit more so that kind of blends in the valance parts a little bit better so once that sanding work is done uh it's back with some filler now to fill in any remaining gaps that we have uh, so there is a little bit of a gap along the 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 was the join between the valance and the the rear kind of boot lid trunk lid if you're american i guess uh so that's just using some ravel plasto filler uh, so this is a solvent based filler so it, it does tend to adhere to the plastic very well uh, I also find the sands uh, very smoothly as well once it's cured. It's probably, yeah, it's probably my go-to filler now. So that work is performed on the front and rear valance. Uh, here I am just filling in the front valance. Or at least the join line between that and the front wing. So once that filler's had plenty of curing time, uh, it's back in with the sanders again. 
So once again, using the UMP thinny sponge and thinny stick. Uh, I do tend to find that th these are probably probably my favorites. I think when they're new, they are incredibly sharp, very effective, and once once they're well used, they actually they actually become a much finer grade and actually can be very useful for kind of final prep work of a body before paint. So in this case, I'm in with one of the other thinny sticks. I th think this might be the 800. I can't remember the numbers. I tend to feel them and, and see what I think of them before I use them. So, so again, this, the, the stiffness of this one does kind of help get into that little angle uh, just below the, the trunk lid, boot lid. So it's a case of progressively working around, uh, kind of feeling along those join lines to see if I'm happy with them. I think finally it's it's at the stage where I'm reasonably happy and we're ready to go to primer. Uh, so it's going to be primed in UMP grey. Uh, so, so the overall paint scheme is going to be black. So could use a black primer, but I think with the grey primer, it kind of you know it's easy to see where the grey goes on white, and then with it being grey primer, it's easy to see where the black base coat goes over the grey. Uh, sometimes with black, it's with black on black, it's harder to see exactly where your base coat is going down. So it's the usual process, kind of working my way around the body, uh, building up those coats of primer. Grey primer can go on reasonably heavy because uh, I tend to get a, a, a light dust coat down as I'm starting. That gives a good kind of adherent surface uh, for the subsequent coats to go down on. Uh, so I'm just making sure I get in around all the angles inside the engine bay. The bonnet does lift so it's reasonably visible so you need to make sure you kind of cover areas in around the engine. Technically it's also visible from underneath as well. And there is a, a an engine going in there as well so so there we go so that's the first couple of coats of primer done last little bit of touching up so unfortunately once primer was done uh, there was clearly a few areas that weren't perfect of course that this is one of the benefits of primer uh, certainly a matte primer like this it's very obvious if there's any kind of further flaws uh, so there's a couple of areas on the front wing that need a little bit of work. Uh, the seam lines are clearly coming through. The rear shoulders also have a couple of obvious areas where those raised uh, Mustang logos were on the front wings and the mold lines on the kind of rear three quarter rear shoulders uh, do kind of stand out under a primer. So, so they'll get further sanded back as you can see, I've gone back to bare plastic in this case. So essentially, this is this is going to require another coat of primer. So both sides of the, the shoulder need a little bit of attention. So once I'm happy with that, it's, it's back to spray booth and back for some more coats of primer. Uh, so UMP grey primer again. Same process as before. Uh, we'll just build it up quite slowly. Get in around all the angles, in around the arches, uh, under the sills. Make sure we have a good continuous surface. Uh, make sure we cover up those areas that have been sanded back. So this has all been done with uh, the UMP Apex running at about 30 PSI. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks fairly spot on to my eyes. Oh, no, oh, back for another pass. Obviously something I wasn't happy with. So once that primer has had a few hours to set, uh, I'm going back in with the base color. 
So I'm using Ravel's semi-gloss black. Uh, because that's an acrylic paint, I don't really need to leave the primer uh, cure for that long. It'll go down fine. So I think I've left it about two or three hours. And then it's acrylic over acrylic. Uh, so I quite like the semi-gloss black. It, it's got a good... It'll have good black colour to it. Uh, probably darker than, say, the UMP black primer and the slight kind of soft sheen that you get on it I tend to find it's quite nice to work with uh, certainly with kind of large striped decals at least it gives you a little bit of surface area where you can move the decals about which we'll, we'll come back to a little bit later sometimes with a matte completely matte surface I do find the decals can if they're very thin they can stick very very fast and they can be hard to move and reposition so a little bit of a sheen on this semi-gloss black uh, kind of helps in that. So once again, it's a case of working your way around, build up those coats. Uh, because of the way I paint, kind of slowly working my way around, uh, I wouldn't necessarily stop between coats. I may rest for a couple of minutes, but normally by the time I've finished one coat, back where I started is already dry or flashed off. So there we go, so that's all the base coat work done. So that's given about 24 hours to cure and then it's straight into the decal work. So first first impressions of the decals are they are pretty good. Uh, they're pretty thin. Uh, so it's the usual process here. I've got a tub of warm water off to the left. And I'm using some micro set uh, just to prep the surface. So I'm just wetting the surface with some microset. Uh, normally helps the decal slide. Uh, it's slightly acidic, so it probably helps clean the surface, degrease it as well. Uh, and should give a better surface for that decal to adhere to. Uh, so as you can see, these decals are pretty thin. Uh, they're not easy to slide about which is obviously good from a finish point of view, but it does mean you need to get them down pretty accurately. Uh, so for this bonnet scoop, we're getting it on with a little bit of micro set only. Uh, I think it will put some microsol on as well. Once that's given a little bit of setting time, it's then back in with the rest of the stripe for the bonnet. Uh, and this is probably the most challenging decal on the car because uh, you need to make sure that that kind of bonnet stripe matches uh, the hood stripe so here I've managed to fold the decal which is uh, quite challenging to fix just trying to make sure that it all matches around that bonnet scoop so after a little bit of fettling a little bit of probably swearing at it because it's folded over it is perfectly lined up uh, and I'm completely happy with that so we're just going to go back in a little bit of microsol just to help it soften even more and bed down onto the surface. So it's the same process for all the other decals. Uh, make sure you get that kind of water out or any liquid from underneath the decal. Uh, work it into the surface, work out any creases. Get your microsol down, uh, burnish it into any of the panel lines that you need. Uh, if it's not sitting in the panel lines, go back and hit it with some UMP kind of normal or UMP strong. Work your way up through the strengths. Uh, but these decals are pretty thin and pretty responsive to microsol. Uh, so I'm quite happy with that. So yes, yeah, so all them stripes went down. Uh, pretty well actually i think the only area that i wasn't entirely satisfied with was around the uh, the number plate recesses uh they get a couple of tears but those areas should be covered up by the number plates come the end anyway so now that that's had 24 hour drying time i uh, will start the 2k process uh, so i'm using pro range 2k 
uh, using the HS Infinity with a 0.4 needle, running at about 26 to 28 psi, give or take. Uh, so 2K has been mixed up as per Pro Ranger's instructions, and this is the first coat going down. Uh, so this really doesn't need to be a wet coat, this is more of a tack coat. But I have been playing around with it a little bit, so I've been going for a slightly heavier first coat. Uh, so it's a little bit more than just a tack coat, a little bit more than just a dusting. Uh, not to the point where it's you know it's a proper sheen because obviously at this stage you don't want any runs in that 2k but certainly it's it's a start of a little bit of a shiny coat on it uh, so I'll be put in the box for 15 minutes and then we'll come back to do the second coat so the second coat is going to be your first wet coat uh, so you're going on a little bit heavier trying to get nice shine on that 2k uh, at this stage there's still maybe a little bit of orange peel in a few areas but that's not too much of a worry at this stage the third and final wet coat can take care of that but obviously you don't want too much so we're kind of working our way through making sure we're quite happy with that as a first wet coat Of course, once this is done, it'll go back in the box for another 15 minutes. Uh, that'll tack up very, very well. And then, of course, we can come back for the third and final uh, wet coat. And as with, you know, as is the case with most two Ks, pretty much what you see here is what you're going to get. Uh, maybe aside from any dust that may fall on it, which is why it goes in a covered box with some vent holes uh, to make sure that that 2K can off gas and start the curing process. So within a couple of hours that should be dust free. Uh, still not fully set but certainly dust free. So but once that third coat is now finished uh, that can be set aside for a few days to let it cure properly we can go back and start work on some other bits uh, so here i am just kind of clipping off the the engine components off the sprues uh, time to start working on the engine so as is usual every part is a little bit of clean up on sprue gates uh, any remnants of flash or anything like that uh, so the engine halves will go straight together uh, and they'll be off for for prime and paint every other part so generally what i do is break it down into sub assembly so i'll get all the engine parts together clean them all up uh mount them however i want for for spraying so i've already made a little bit of pile of running gear parts now i'm going to make a small pile of i suppose the the exhaust parts uh, i got the interior tub off as well uh, and continuing to clean up on all those parts using a variety of UMP sanders. You can use the blade to scrape some of that away. But all in all, just making sure any kind of visible seam lines are, are eliminated uh, as efficiently as possible. So there's a few other bits and pieces for the engine bay. Uh, so they'll get put in right at the very end. So once all that cleanup is done, we can get all those parts kind of mounted for spraying. Uh, so in this kit, there's quite a bit of chrome, uh, and I was a little bit short on Molotow chrome, so I decided to leave the kit chrome. Uh, some of the parts I'm going to spray with a matte coat just to dull them off a bit. So here the engine has had its coat of blue uh, to represent the Ford engine blue color. Uh, so I've used one of the Ravel colors. It's not a perfect match, but it looks good enough uh, for me anyway. So then the gearbox is then sprayed with, uh, I think it's Ravel aluminium. 
uh, give it that metallic color so that's been sprayed off screen can now remove the masking tape and see how that kind of process has worked out so for me that's looking uh, pretty decent so we can start assembling some of the other engine components uh, so the sump was one of the chrome parts it's been given it's been given a coat of matte uh, matte varnish just to dull the chrome a little bit and then there's what looks like an oil radiator sits on the underside of that sump area so with this revel kit you know the, the the finish on these parts is quite soft the details not great uh, it is an older kit, so you have to bear that in mind. It's it's not the most kind of perfect engine I've seen from Ravel. Uh, so here I'm adding in the the heads, cylinder heads, uh, a few of the other engine components, the front face of the engine, which probably got. Uh, I think the oil filters on the side. I think that's molded in. So once they are attached, there's a little bit of detail painting. Uh, so I think that's the intake manifold getting painted in Ravel Silver, I think. Uh, and then the oil filter is going to get a coat of red paint, uh, which I've done by hand. Sadly, almost off screen. And now I'm just drilling some holes for some ignition cables, which will be installed uh, later on once the exhausts are on. Uh, so I've sprayed the chrome rocker covers in black. Uh, and now I'm just using a cocktail stick just to scrape away the very top, uh, which will expose the, the kind of cooling fins on the top and also the, the lettering. Uh, the Cobra lettering on the top of that rocker cover. Uh, so it's so a black paint over, so it's acrylic black paint over the chrome. Uh, it will be pretty fragile, so you do need to be careful handling it. Uh, useful for scraping it away, but then, you know, it's very easy to chip later on, so you do have to be cautious. But I'm happy enough with how they came out, and both of those rocker covers are glued. Uh, to the top of the engine. So I've added the exhaust manifolds and now I'm going to uh, install some ignition cabling. Uh, so I think this is just some 24 gauge wiring I've picked up. Little bit over scale. Uh, but, you know, it seems to do the job and gives a reasonable representation of some ignition wiring on the engine. So each of those are kind of glued into the holes that were pre-drilled uh, so there's eight of them because it's a v8 engine and then it's just a case of uh getting them kind of shaped into place where you want them kind of bundle them and group them as you need uh, and then bend them round and get them glued to the distributor uh, so in this case, I'm not worried about firing order. Uh, it's just to give a little bit of visual interest inside the, the engine bay. So now the engine is done, it's time to start working on the interior. So there's not a huge amount of components. Uh, a couple of seats for the front. Uh, the steering wheel, the fork, I suppose the spokes on the steering wheel are going to get drilled out uh, so here i'm just drilling them out with various drill bits uh, so the drill i'm using is actually a battery operated drill for nail art uh, but the micro drill shanked drill bits do actually fit in it quite well it's extremely low torque but just good enough for drilling these type of applications so once again extra thin as the cement of choice for gluing the seats together so because i made the decision earlier to keep the kit chrome as it was uh i now need to mask up the center portion well actually mask up the outer portion of the of the rims because uh, they'll stay chrome and then spray the centers black so the individual spokes will then then i'll use the 
basically the same thing I did earlier, but use a cotton bud and some uh, UMP thinner just to remove the uh, the UMP black primer. So while I'm over there, there's a few other bits and pieces need to be sprayed up. Uh, it's all a running gear. Uh, rear diff axles, front suspension, front under tray, exhaust, all get primed uh, with UMP black. Uh, all the interior parts get primed in UMP black. Uh, I think I end up deciding just to leave them in the UMP black because it's called a satin black. Uh, so here I'm just spraying the, the center portion of the, the wheels in black. So, this, so the UMP black is, is it's not quite a full matte. It's got a slight, ever so slight sheen to it, so it can it can kind of pass as a satin black, which works quite well. Uh, so the masks are removed, and for the spokes, I'm basically just using a little bit of UMP acrylic thinner, uh, a moist cotton bud, just to remove the excess paint. So this is a an easy enough trick to do with, with chrome, because uh, the 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 paint doesn't adhere very well to the chrome parts. And here's just a close-up shot of that work in progress. So it's literally just a cotton bud that's got a little bit of moist uh, UMP thinners on it, and then just basically rub the paint where you want to remove it. So the chassis was also sprayed at the same time. Uh, however, the chassis was sprayed using, I think it was Ravel Gloss Black, just to give it a little bit of a shine, but a different tone to, to the bodywork. Uh, so there's a couple of little areas that need some hand painting. Uh, so this is the fuel tank at the back, which I'm just brush painting with some Ravel, I think it's aluminium, number 99. So you just go around the kind of edges carefully, trying to get as straight a line as possible, and then just fill in the bits in the middle. Uh, so front suspension, subframe, so there's a few parts on that which are painted silver. So that's also been done using brush paint. It's on the underside, so it's not going to get seen very often. If at all, really. So that's a quick little painting job. The Ravel brush brush painting with Ravels is is uh, is quite enjoyable. They're good brush paints, uh, and certainly over the kind of UMP primer, uh, they brush on very well. Uh, because of the success in some of the other areas, I decided well, I might as well just brush paint the exhaust system while I was sat there. Uh, I think it was either sat in the hangout or sat on the Sunday live show. So it just saved me having to bomb off to the spray booth. So once those parts are, once paint has a chance to dry, I think they're given an hour or two to dry, you can start assembling some of those components. So a subframe just goes straight into its locating holes on the, the chassis, on the chassis legs. And then I think there's four locating points for the exhaust. And then the ends of the exhaust should meet up with the manifolds on the engine when that's installed. So I'm just pressing them into place. And they go in quite nicely. So there's a couple of locating, there's three locating points for the engine. But then the tricky bit is just getting those exhausts lined up with the manifold. Uh, I think the manifolds had to be squeezed a little bit just to get them to meet. So a bit of CA glue and, and they stick absolutely fine. So that engine is in and I'm happy with that. So now the, the radiator uh, gets a quick coat of silver on the, the cooling element bit. 
so that kind of front bulkhead and radiator assembly that'll pop in after the chassis goes on sorry after the body goes on the chassis uh, which I'll cover in part two in the final assembly same process just run around the outline of the the area you want and then fill in the middle uh, but just carefully outline it it looks absolutely fine the spokes on the steering wheel also get a coat of silver paint I think drilling out the the holes in the spokes was a good idea turn the adds to the to kind of scale realism of the steering wheel although there's there's not a huge amount inside the the steering wheel it's nice to have a little bit of focus on that So there's a couple of parts in the chrome tree, so the binnacle for the instruments. Uh, the center of that is painted black. So in this case, I'm brush painting it with some Revell uh, satin black, semi-gloss black. And the front grille is done in the same way. So just the chrome around the exterior is left. The rest of it is, is just painted black. The same process as before, just paint paint your edge first and then fill in the bits in the middle. So there's a couple of silver trim pieces on the seat. And once again, they're just brush painted using some Ravel number 90 silver, I think it is. The gear stick in this is on the chrome tree. Uh, so there's so the, the top of the gear knob is painted black and the gator for the gear stick is also painted black. Uh, I think both of them are done using satin black in this case. So the steering wheel itself uh, using Ravel wood brown. Uh, I can't remember which number it is, but that'll give us the, the basic wood color for the steering wheel. Uh, and that'll be set to one side to dry and we'll come back and Put a coat of Tamiya Clear Orange over that. There's a couple of little details picked out on the instrument panel uh, using a silver marker. And there we go. We're back to the steering wheel to give it a coat of clear orange. The clear orange just gives it that kind of more vibrant kind of wood color. Plus with the, the, the wood brown was put on quite kind of a streaking way. So some of the, the kind of base black primer kind of shows through. So the final few steps for the instrument panel are to add in, add in the individual binnacle. Uh, unfortunately, it's this point I realize I've actually put the decals on uh, upside down on this. Uh, so it's too late to correct that, so I'm just going to have to live with it. Uh, steering wheel hub goes on, and then the steering wheel onto that. Uh, so considering the interior is very much a just a black interior that steering wheel has a, it does actually become quite a focal point so it does actually look quite nice that the way the finish has come out so i'm quite pleased with that uh, so there's the rear seats and then we can set in the instrument panel it's got two slots on either side and then the seats can get glued in now for the seats i've added a couple of kind of homemade seat belts the buckles are just made out of some kind of spare wire i had just bent around and painted silver and uh, with some three mil ribbon just passed through to give uh, a view of a lap belt basically so the last step of uh, of this part of the build is just to assemble uh, the wheel hubs onto the tires sorry wheels onto the tires uh, it's there literally just one piece for each, uh, two pieces for each wheel one on the front one on the back a bit of ca glue between them and they are glued together. So once that's done, that's the end of part one. Uh, so it's back over to me. So there we go. Uh, that's part one done and dusted. Uh, to have covered, as we said at the start, 
bodywork, prep, prime, paint, uh, 2K, decals, 2K, all that kind of stuff. Uh, most of the other bits have been kind of prepped, painted, uh, almost ready for assembly. And in part two, we'll cover all those kind of uh, extra bits of assembly and kind of all the bits we often tend to leave towards the end, like painting lights, doing clear parts. And in this case, uh, doing the, the bare metal foil uh, on the bits that need doing as well. So, uh, so please come back for part two. Uh, that should hopefully be out in probably about another week's time. Because uh, that tends to be about the, the rate at which I can edit and upload videos. Uh, so there we go. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you've liked the video, pop a like. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you are a subscriber, thanks for coming back. Thanks for staying with me. Uh, and I look forward to uh, any of the comments you've got. So uh, we'll see you all in the next part. See you soon. Bye bye.